<laughs> now I get to play with what I really wanted to play with. This baby. This is the Ubiquity Edge Switch 24 port light. Pretty damn expensive. I don't know why managed switches are so pricey. But I have my access point from Ubiquity set up. Now I get to play with that toy. So step one, I'm going to unbox it, take a peek at what's inside. And we're going to install it and then see what happens from there. But I wanted to mention that while I was searching for managed switches, originally I thought I would just get like a cheap used enterprise gigabit managed switch or something along those lines. But I kept going in these redundant little loops because the reason they're so cheap is because they're really, really loud. And ultimately, I thought, yeah, let's just get the damn ubiquity. I mean, I'll be praying a little bit more for it, but I know it's a very solid device. And there was actually, this is the edge switch. There is also an equivalent Unify managed switch, which would have tied in with the Unify controller. It's white. So, right off the bat, I'm like, yeah, I don't want white devices. It just doesn't match the black everything else. The hardware is supposedly the same, and the only major difference was that one uses a web interface. That's this guy, like any normal device, whereas the Unify does not. And I recall researching that there were some potential missing features or lack of like a command line interface or anything to really nail a few key feature sets. So I decided let's just get the, the black one instead. Plus there's a lot more Googleable information out there on the Ed Switch. It's been around longer than the Unify one. And it was like 10 bucks cheaper. So, oh, and it came in black. Now, the only bummer is that it doesn't have the PoE feature on it. it. That's the only difference between the light and the even more expensive regular ones is the power over Ethernet. And I just have no way of justifying that whatsoever, so I got the light. This is not an unboxing video. Actual mounting. Do dead things for the front. I'll All right, so not really much to show you. I mean, a switch is a switch. It's 24 ports, all gigabit. It has two SFPs. If you want to blow money to connect it with fiber to another switch. I don't know why the hell fiber is so expensive. The Not just the cable, but the modules you need. It's just like... Eh, no, 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 I can't. Like, there's, there's no justifying it in my case. Looks like there's a console port in the back. And that's really about it, it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and connect it. I don't like that it doesn't have an individual light for everything, but now that I think about it, it might actually have the lights right on the connectors from the looks of it. Because there's this huge blank gap of space of nothing here. If it was the 48, then obviously it would be utilizing all that space. But these lights on the plugs are... Like, if those are actual lights, then I'll have no complaints, I suppose. Alright, so I've got it partially hooked up. Not everything's connected in there. I hopped into PFSense. I have this server connected, as well as the computers. And here's the MAC address for it. So it's in the DHCP lease list. 
I did an IP scan on my computer, my physical computer in this case. I don't know why I could have just done it on the administration computer. It's there for that reason, but I could see it was given this IP, which I'll probably change, but for the moment, let's go ahead and hop in and see if that works. Success. And I presume the default login would be UBNT. And I am correct. Okay. We are past the preliminary stage. The device works. The box that came in from FedEx looked like it had a few good drop kicks. And it sat around in the truck since Saturday. It is now... Tuesday. Yesterday was apparently Memorial Day, which has fucked me over eight years now. Eight years in a row. Memorial Day has fucked me over. Every single Memorial Day. Every single time. Year after year. So it looks like there's some pretty cool information right off the bat. I mean, it has the temperature, and this thing is fanless. The 24-port version is fanless. The 48 would have fans, but the 48 one is just expensive. So it's it's silent, kind of nice. I already have enough servers and stuff making noise. Logged in users, so that's the admin IP. So we'll play around with this stuff more. I'll have to get everything else connected. I had to make sure the thing actually worked. It powered on. I plugged in my internet, or my server, which has the internet, as well as these computers where you can log in. All good. So now we can just get everything else plugged in and go from there. I've got all my new wires rerunning every which way. I'll have to get, show you guys a picture of what the rack looks like. I basically took my old 8-port unmanaged trend net switch and kissed it goodbye. because. Fuck you, we don't need you anymore. We're managed now. It has served me well, though. Now, I stressed this before, and I'll say it again. Net mapping out your network topology is a great idea. Whatever the hell system you want to use to help you keep things organized, it was very easy for me to reference what cable went where, and just plug it in and remove the cabling and change the labeling. So every cable going into the switch, I know which port it's going into and so on. So I'm using like 13 of the 24 ports already. And there is one last item that's going to be coming in hopefully by the end of this week. And that's going to be a port network inter interface card that I'm going to add into my first server so that it has eight ports. So I am now left with the edge switch and the the old cheapo managed switch that has the four gigabit ports. And I did go ahead and connect them. I have a plan for this later. For the moment, it's going to be unused. But I have two cables that I'm going to have to run from my room downstairs. And I kind of mapped out a little bit of the other network in the house. Minus, I don't know who else is what. So they had to have this. And my goal is to take their connection and run it into my room so that I can, and hopefully with a VLAN of some form, so that I can keep their network completely isolated from my network. So all my folder sharing and stuff would be invisible to them. And the only thing that would be able to see their network would be maybe my administration so that I can get this unified controller dependence off of their system and into mine. But that's a separate thing to worry about, so let's not worry about that. For now, one switch is gone. One access point is gone. 
most of what I got is done connection wise. Well, now that I have those connected up and everything, let us go ahead and get back into the administration stuff for the switch and let's play with it. So our temperatures are showing 60 degree, 63 degrees Celsius. Well, first thing to do is always the same. And that is, and this is very much the same interface it looks like with a million more features as the uh, Edge Router X that my roommate has. It's very similar, if not the same thing. Device configuration has changed, please save. Okay, so you gotta remember that. So I guess if you break it and you reboot it, it will not have saved anything until you manually save. That's actually the same way the the other managed switch worked. I wonder if that's a standard or something. Because that's good. If it works, save. If it doesn't work, restart it and hope for the best. I see firmware right here. Status, configure, and upgrade. So where the hell do I get new firmware? When in doubt, Google it. Since I downloaded it off my desktop, it'll be in here. In transfer. And hopefully we don't break the device. <laughs> I see transfer completed. Okay, next active. Submit, I presume. When processes aren't completely automated, I always get a little nervous because it increases the amount of room for user error. And where would the reboot option be? I don't know where the reboot option is. Oh, there it is. Utilities restart switch. It just finished rebooting. It looks like it took probably this much time, about a minute and 46 seconds. So I'm assuming it was doing the upgrade process and everything. There's just no way to monitor it while it was happening. Everything came back up. And I see it says 1.7. So now we are up to date. That's always the first step you should be doing with any new hardware. In my opinion, anyways. Temperature status normal. Well, I guess they deprecated the, the convenience of numerical representations of the temperature in favor of fuzzy logic. The link aggregation going on is actually these three here is the main server and ESXi or vSphere, whatever you want to call it, is doing the link aggregation so the switch doesn't need to know much of anything about anything and these four here are the second server and that's the same deal. Let's change the IP address that it's assigned. Give it a fixed IP as soon as I know how. And there's a basic category here now that shows the restart, firmware, etc. Good old port mirroring. I'm going to need that later on. Here we go. Network configuration protocol. I want it to... What is boot P, I wonder? I don't know. Two was my old access point, which is no longer there. And that might be where I shall place it. Submit. And this is where we end up locking ourselves out of the whole system and then lose complete access and freak out and run around with our hair on fire and screaming and stuff. Aha, sweet. Okay. And for my own record, I'm going to update this with the port so that I have a little bit of an extra record. Of course, if I try and connect the access point up there back, 
I'm going to have a bit of an issue trying to get into the management. That's all right. And it looks like when you don't have a save done, it will actually warn you. That's pretty cool. It will prevent you from forgetting that you spent the last 10 hours configuring some fancy thing and then forgot to save. I think for the sake of this video, I'm going to just do the VLAN trunking, get that set back up because I'm pretty sure it's broken right now. It should be anyways. I can find out. Let's go to my web server. Uh, go. Come on. Load you. So this is the web server we created a while back. Okay. Looks like it has internet. It cannot ping the router. But it can ping the 101 gateway. So the conclusion I can reach is that it works already. Like the trunking maybe by default is already enabled. Okay, yep, I can see when I, the tooltip pop up, it says trunk allowed VLANs 1 through 4093. Remember when I broke the other router trying to do that, or the other switch doing that in a previous video? <laughs> Looks like this one's enabled by default with trunking, so unless I'm creating a VLAN that's getting tagged, like off of this, then we're already set. It works. I don't have to do anything. That's fantastic. So I don't know what much more for me to show at the moment is because this is one of those things where I spend like the next 40 hours just playing and breaking shit. And I don't really want to be recording myself the whole time doing that. And the lights on the switch are in fact like at the connectors. They're actually very difficult to see because the connector types I have are pretty wide. Or at least they feel very wide. The um, I mean, it's just a normal network cable from Monoprice. I got the ones that have the little plastic tip that goes over to help prevent that from hooking and catching on and ripping off but without having that huge, you know, foreskin thing over it. So... Yeah, just between the connectors and the cables themselves coiling around, it's proving to be a bit of a pain to see those lights, which is a bummer. It would have been nice if they were like the other switch and just off to the side. All right, so I snapped a photo kind of from where I'm sitting, pointing that way. You can see my mixer, and this is what I'm calling my rack. And server number one, server number two, and then unused server number three. I got this one for free. So I basically proceeded to take the memory and reconfigure the other two to get more memory. So we got like 60 gigs of RAM and 40 gigs of RAM. And there was still a leftover four gigs that I couldn't work into the configurations due to the way the RAM channels and Memory bus doodads uh, are set up about as close as it's going to get native. You can see the image quality is not that good, but it's fine. But here is my annoyance. I took this and say this. That way I can draw and stuff. You can see the mono price cheapo has all the lights and stuff right here very easy to see right now there's only this one connected which is this guy going into that port right there but there's like all this unused space here that just it's a waste The only thing that's a light is this guy right here. It's the LED that shows you that it's on and it changes colors when it was booting up. 
the lights themselves are physically located on the ports. So like if this is a port right here, like the lights are somewhere around there. You can see right here, that's where the only light in this photo is visible is right there. So the cables and stuff are blocking my view of the majority of those lights. Is it a big deal? Not really, but it's still annoying. But hey, it's not a bad view.